Hey everyone, and welcome to our best specs to main in Shadowlands for patch 9.0. Some very common questions we get here at Skillcapped are, what specs should I play in Shadowlands? Or what's the strongest melee, healer, or ranged in Shadowlands right now? Well, in this video, we've gotten in contact with our rank one consultants and have asked them all to give their opinions on what's looking strong going into the expansion arena season one based on beta gameplay and patch notes. Taking this information, we're going to be breaking down what we consider to be the best specs to main for each role in 9.0 arena and why. Before we get started, we here at Skillcapped release premium content every single week, including news, tier lists, arena walkthroughs, and lots more to not only keep you up to date on the meta as it evolves, but also give you that edge when it comes to all aspects of World of Warcraft PvP. So, if you want to help support the channel and be notified the second we release any new content, a subscription to the channel as well as a like on this video costs nothing and helps us out a ton. To begin, we're going to look at our melee suggestions, the first of which is Arms Warrior. When you think Warrior, you'll probably bring up an image of a high damage standard melee class, which is how it's usually presented in other MMOs. Well, Arms Warrior in PvP takes that idea but adds a ton of team utility into the mix, making for a much more intricate playstyle. If you like dealing damage, but also like to help out and support your team, then look no further. This utility, as we call it, is what's currently making them so strong going into Shadowlands. It will be your job to support your team by utilizing spells such as intervene at crucial times to soak damage when your teammates are under heavy fire, which you can then mitigate with ignore pain. Intervene can also be used to redirect important abilities like Kidney Shot or Blind if timed well, and can even be used to reflect important spells like Polymorph or a Freezing Trap being used on your healer when picking up the Overwatch PvP talent. This can even be taken a step further by running with the Misshapen Mirror Legendary, which allows your Spell Reflect to work on your closest teammate, giving you an additional tool to prevent spells from landing onto your teammates. Together, this can be a caster's nightmare. Rotating through your Interrupt, Stun, Overwatch, Intervene, and Misshapen Mirror Spell Reflect to all but prevent important damaging spells like Chaos Bolt and Vampiric Touch or CC from landing on your team and swing momentum in your favor. And when you run out of stops, you've still got War Banner if you choose to spec into it to be even more disruptive and keep your team going. Beyond that, Rallying Cry is yet another incredibly effective tool for keeping your team alive through enemy kill attempts. And when paired with the Master and Commander PvP talent, it becomes a very reliable defensive CD for you and your team. To combine with all this utility, you can also expect Arms Warrior to bring incredibly high damage if they're able to maintain uptime. It's your job as the Warrior to keep up the consistent pressure and momentum. Having high damage coming from your main damaging abilities, Overpower, Slam, and Mortal Strike with the latter being your main source of damage, adding your mastery deep wounds to the target. Then you've got powerful cooldowns like Sharpen Blade and Colossus Smash to burst enemies low enough to finish them off with your execute ability. Not only are warriors extremely adept at shutting down casters like previously mentioned, but also excel when facing melee cleaves. Abilities like Sweeping Strikes and Blade Storm allow you to cleave stacked up targets with ease, especially when combined with the new Covenant ability Spear of Bastion, which locks enemies into a small area, preventing them from escaping your spread damage. And there's even more utility with the option to pick up the PvP talent disarm to stop your melee opponent from dealing damage. The only real weakness of an arms warrior right now are their lack of control, which can result in setting up kills being challenging. But if you stick them with another high damage melees, you have yourself a composition which is not only doing tremendous consistent damage, but also becomes incredibly hard to kill with all the utility that you're providing. On the flip side, the playstyle of Arms Warrior also makes them great when paired up with casters. You can aid them in surviving with your intervene and even allow them to avoid certain interrupts giving your team an easier job at securing CC. So, overall, all this added utility in Shadowlands, just how durable they are themselves and their high consistent damage output, results in Arms Warriors being one of the most well-rounded melee and a great spec to main when it comes to Arena. Our next recommendation is for those of you who prefer a more setup and control-based approach. Subtlety Rogue excels at two main aspects, crowd control and burst. Inside of Arena, it's going to be your job to set up CC and create kill opportunities for your team. You can use the mobility provided by Shadow Step to teleport to a healer, Kidney Shot to lock them down before Shadow Stepping back to your target and locking them down with a Cheap Shot. This then allows your teammates to follow up with crowd control while you've instantly locked down two targets. If they're unable to secure CC, still you can even take matters into your own hands 
by either securing a sap off the kidney shot if they drop out of combat or using your strongest form of CC blind. Blind is an instant eight second CC, which you can use to always guarantee follow up by using either shadow dance or vanish to secure a sap. That's not all though. If your stuns, blind, or even potential saps are not enough control to secure a kill, don't worry, Sub also brings some extremely powerful spells in the form of Smoke Bomb and Shadowy Duel. Shadowy Duel puts you and your chosen opponent in a 1v1 situation, which you can use on low targets to prevent healing, giving you some extra time to finish off a low target. Whereas Smoke Bomb is a spell we're all familiar with and provides a lot of power for finishing off targets. Beyond just a slew of control, Sub Rogue has a very unique damage pattern. Your consistent damage is almost non-existent. Everything you do during your downtime is preparing for your next setup, such as making sure you have Rupture up on the target and Slice and Dice up on yourself. Then all your damage comes from short on-demand burst windows. You'll cheap shot your kill target with your main offensive and most important CD, Shadow Dance, which grants use of the stealth only abilities. Before then, using Shadow Strike to build up combo points to then spend on Eviscerate while stun locking the target, these burst windows can be amplified further by cooldowns like Symbols of Death and Shadow Blades. This combination of having high control coupled with their now much stronger burst damage going into Shadowlands makes them one of our best picks to main. Although Sub Rogue's strengths are also its biggest crux, as this setup and control based playstyle requires a lot of coordination and skill to perfect. But if you do master it, it's well worth it as Sub Rogue has one of the highest skill ceilings in the game. Moving on, we've got our third and final recommended melee to main for patch 9.0 which is going to be Windwalker Monk. Picking a Windwalker, you can expect to see some of the highest mobility in the game. Windwalker has access to Transcendence to escape sticky situations, two rolls to maintain uptime or kite enemies, and even Flying Serpent Kick, which allows you to travel an immense distance in a very short period. Not to mention, their best legendary options all revolve around buffing this mobility further. There is the recently buffed Kiefer's Skyreach Legendary, which turns your main generator Tiger Palm into a 10-yard dash. Then there's Escape Reality, which allows you to access your Transcendence twice in a 10-second period. So, as you can tell, mobility is the name of the game. Windwalker also still provides decent utility with Tiger's Lust, to help your teammates or yourself escape routes or just to speed targets up. This can be furthered with the PvP talent Ride the Wind, giving yourself and your team increased MS and immunity to slows after using your Flying Serpent Kick, and even Ring of Peace which can be used to create space for your team on top of a spammable route from Disabling Reach and even a Disarm from Grapple Weapon. Of course, as you're also a hybrid class, you've even got access to Vivify to do some minor healing on yourself or your team in a pinch. But a mixture of mobility and some decent utility is not all that Windwalker has to offer. Their biggest asset going into Shadowlands is actually going to be their damage output. They have the potential to do ridiculous damage both single target and AoE. As most of their damage is coming from Fists of Fury, which is naturally AoE, this results in a lot of passive cleave on your standard rotation. As a result, Windwalkers naturally perform a lot better in cleave-style compositions, Overall, what you can expect when playing a Windwalker is not only the high consistent pressure, but also very potent burst windows inside of your leg sweep, coming from strong CDs like Serenity, Storm, Earth, and Fire, and even the newly added Invoke Zhu Wen, which is now a 2 minute CD pet that not only does strong damage in and of itself, but also has its damage increase the more damage that you deal yourself, which can drop enemies low, allowing you to instantly finish them off with the return of Touch of Death to its old state, being an instant one-shot execute once a target drops low on health. Biggest of all, though, is the Covenant ability Fallen Order. This has already been nerfed and still remains to be one of the most powerful Covenant abilities in the game. Having a 3 minute CD, you summon Spirit Monks. These monks attack your enemies and even heal you, but the damage they do is just absurd. Your biggest challenge when picking up Windwalker is going to be mastering your mobility as it's a large part of your defensive toolkit, along with Touch of Karma, Diffuse Magic, and the now baseline Fortifying Brew. But if you want a melee that has the burst of Sub Rogue, combined with the sustained damage of a warrior but are not too interested in team utility or control, Windwalker is going to be a great alternative and set to be extremely strong going forward into the expansion. Alright then, just to recap, our top 3 melee picks going into Shadowlands are Arms Warrior, Subtlety Rogue, and Windwalker Monk. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the ranged classes. But if you're enjoying the video so far, a sub to the channel would be phenomenal. Anyway, 
If ranged is more your specialty, then our first recommendation is going to be Shadow Priest. Crowd control, utility, off healing, strong defensives, high burst, strong damage over time, spread pressure, and even the ability to steal your opponent's spells. Okay, that was a bit of a mouthful, but that's just what Shadow Priest is bringing to the table in this expansion. As with any hybrid, if you want to succeed, you're going to have to not only keep track of what your enemies are doing, but also your teammates, assisting in keeping them alive with spells such as Shadow Mend or Power Word Shield, or even helping to keep them out of danger by moving them across the map with Leap of Faith. And then, if worse comes to worse, you've even got Void Shift to swap your health with your teammate, saving yourself or your allies. Strongest of all your your utility though is going to be mass dispel. The ability to remove CC from your teammates is something very unique for a DPS class. Okay, so you've got all this utility, but what about yourself? Well, Shadow Priests, although being a cloth armor type caster, are one of the hardest to take down. They've got Dispersion, Greater Fade, and even Desperate Prayer. But Shadow, as mentioned, isn't all about their utility and survivability. They also bring a ton of instant CC from abilities like Silence, Psychic Horror, and Fear, which makes you a great partner for any melee class. You can assist them with single target damage while locking down the enemy healer with all this instant CC. This crowd control aspect of Shadow Priest has only been improved upon going into Shadowlands with the introduction of Thought Steal. This is one of the most unique abilities in the game as it allows you to essentially steal a spell from your opponent. The two biggest highlights from this are that mages give you polymorph and warlocks give you fear. So not only do you gain access to this ability for a short period, you also remove their ability to use it. So not only do you have three instant CCs, but you can also cast polymorph to extend crowd control chains even further. But don't get me wrong, Shadow Priests are not just a support-based caster, at least anymore. To go along with all of this, Shadow Priests actually have some of the highest spread damage in the game. As you're primarily a dot-based caster, you can create some real pressure if you look to apply your dots to multiple targets, using your CC to force the enemy healer to fall behind. What Shadow Priests previously lacked in other expansions was any real upfront damage, which left them feeling quite team-reliant, well, this is now changing. Thanks to the reintroduction of Devouring Plague, Power Infusion, and even Void Torrent, you can really pack a punch when it comes to single target damage now. So, not only do you have your damage over time effects continuously rotting your enemies, you can throw some crowd control out and then burst your opponents with a stack Devouring Plague. And I've left the best part till last. Coming with Shadowlands, Shadow Priest gets access to the Covenant ability Mind Games. What this does is after a huge initial burst of damage, you cause your target's damage to heal their target, or their healing to damage their target, meaning you can cause enemy healers to just kill their teammates. So at this point, you're probably thinking, what's the catch? Shadow Priest must have some sort of weakness, right? Well, Shadow Priest honestly is really, really good. But as with all classes, there are of course some drawbacks, primarily their limited mobility and the fact that good players can shut you down quite easily. But don't let that discourage you. There is a reason the expansions call it Shadowlands after all, at least that's what I've heard. But nevertheless, Shadow Priest is going to be our first recommended caster for patch 9.0. The second caster that we're recommending is going to be Affliction Warlock. If you enjoy playing casters, doing high damage, but don't want to deal with the utility of Shadow Priests, then look no further. Affliction Warlocks excel at doing sustained high spread pressure. Almost all of their damage comes from damage over time effects, making them great at killing entire teams if left free. Literally right now, not a single class or spec comes close to dealing the damage an Affliction Warlock is capable of putting out. In PvP, this is going to be your main strength. You're expected to apply your instant dots, agony, and corruption, with the latter even slowing enemies by 50%, thanks to the legendary Sacralash's Dark Strike, before then working on getting your only casted dot, Unstable Affliction, up on three targets, subsequently popping powerful CDs like Dark Soul Misery, Dark Glare, and Rapid Contagion to then further bolster the strength of your damage over time effects, causing the enemy team's life to drain away. Although damage is the biggest priority of an Affliction Warlock, there is of course a little more expected from you when it comes to arena. The biggest of which is utilizing your mobility in order to survive. Affliction is one of the easiest casters to take down. You're going to need to use your Demonic Circle and Demonic Gateway to give your opponents a hard time connecting and to build ample space for yourself. Keep up curses like Curse of Weakness or Curse of Tongues to further reduce your opponent's damage output.
output and utilize abilities like Mortal Coil, Howl of Terror, Shadow Fury, or even Fear to further build yourself some distance. Doing so buys you time to then cast the newly added Malefic Rupture, which is essentially your way to deal some initial damage outside of your dots. Although at its core, Warlock is a pet class, Affliction plays with the talent Grimoire of Sacrifice, so worrying about your pet is now a non-issue. But honestly, avoiding damage and dealing damage are the two core aspects of Affliction Warlock, and with their undeniable strength going into Shadowlands, it makes them one of the most desirable casters to pick up if you enjoy dealing damage inside of PvP. Then our third and final caster pick is going to be Frost Mage. I mean, come on, you didn't really expect mages to not be included, now did you? Mage has always had a place inside of PvP, and for good reason. They have the two most important things when it comes to arena, damage and control. Frost is looking like the go-to spec right now, with tons of mobility, high burst damage, great control, and even powerful slows and roots. Your job inside of Arena is going to be to utilize your control in order to create setups for you to then use your instant burst damage. If you want to sit back and just deal damage or top meters, Mage probably isn't the class for you. But if you enjoy a more intricate and setup-based playstyle, then keep listening. Frost Mage has a kit packed with control. Between Nova, Cone of Cold, a root from your pet, and even Ice Nova, melee enemies can find it impossible to ever connect if you play it well. And if they do connect, you've got tools like Ice Barrier combined with the new legendary Triune Ward, which also gives you both Arcane and Blazing Barriers as well. Alter Time, which can then be used to go back up to 10 seconds to avoid damage and even Ice Block to immune all damage if things get dicey. Most importantly is the use of the talent Shimmer. Shimmer has two charges and allows you to teleport a short distance while channeling a spell. Finding the balance between kiting with this and using it to secure CC is where a major difficulty in Mage lies. Crowd control is what any Mage spec does best. Between Polymorph, Roots, and Counterspell, you can make the whole enemy team's life a nightmare, especially their healers. The power of Frost, though, comes with its burst damage. The combination of the passive Shatter combined with the ability of Ice Lance and Frozen Orb means that you have an abundance of instant hard-hitting spells, especially if combined with the legendary Freezing Winds. Although Frost has an abundance of instant burst, if you're left freely casting, you're capable of dealing ridiculous amounts of damage in a short period. Frostbolt paired up with the PvP talent Deep Shatter, Flurry, Ray of Frost, and the new Kyrian Covenant class ability Radiant Spark give you the potential to burst targets down very quickly. Frost, simply put, has the burst of a Fire Mage from BFA, but with the added survivability and control that Frost brings. It's looking to be one of the best casters heading into the new expansion, and will excel in any setup-based composition or a spell cleave. All right, everyone, that's going to be the three ranged specs that are looking to be the strongest going into Shadowlands. Shadow Priest, which brings instant CC, utility, and dots. Affliction, which just deals absurd amounts of damage. And Frost Mage, with their mobility, burst, slows, and control. Last but not least, we're going to take a look at our recommended healers. The first recommended healer of patch 9.0 is going to be Restoration Druid. Restoration Druids heal primarily with healing over time effects, utilizing their shape-shifting forms to assist with damage, survive, or kite their enemies. What's usually held Druids back when it comes to PvP is their weak healing, which often couldn't keep up with the damage output of some classes combined with poor mana efficiency, two things which got heavily addressed going into Shadowlands. Resto's primary asset is that they bring the most out of any healer in terms of CC, providing the extremely powerful Cyclone, which is now baseline, Entangling Roots, Ursul's Vortex, and Mighty Bash, plus the potential CC from changing your affinities, with Feral giving you both Maim and the ability to rake from stealth for two more stuns. When it comes to healing in PvP, there are a few things to look for. Instant healing is one of them, and Druids have it in abundance. Not only do you have all the healing going out from your Life Bloom and Rejuvenation, but you've now got the ability to heal with the newly reworked Swift Mend, which consumes your Rejuve to do some initial instant healing. The second thing to look for is strong healing cooldowns on a short CD. If you lack a way to instantly recover when coming out of CC, then it makes it very difficult as a healer. Well, Druids have access to both Iron Bark, a powerful damage reduction, which also increases your healing over time effects, and now Nature Swiftness. Nature Swiftness may as well be a lay on hands as it instantly heals your target to full health. In Arena for Druids, there are two types of playstyles, which heavily change depending on which affinity you pick up. Selecting Guardian Affinity gives you way more in terms of defense. You get damage reduction, extra self-healing from Frenzied Regeneration, and even Incapacitating Roar, which allows you to more easily secure Cyclones. Then you've got Feral Affinity. 
which as earlier mentioned, grants you maim and rake stuns, as well as some added damage inside of cat form. This can be further improved upon with talents like Heart of the Wild and Master Shapeshifter to basically turn you into a feral druid for a short period. This is great for scenarios like in 2v2, where you can afford to play super aggressively. Honestly though, a lot of how you're expected to play depends on which comp you're currently playing. In some comps like Rogue Mage Druid, you'll be expected to push in for Cyclones and assist with CC. Whereas in some Cleaves or Shadow Play, for instance, sitting back and just healing and utilizing things like Thorns for some extra damage is the usually best course of action. But this flexibility combined with their pure healing output right now makes Druids our first recommended healer for Shadowlands. Our second recommendation for the best healing spec to main going into Shadowlands is going to be Disc Priest. Discipline Priest is hands down the most unique healer, utilizing damage in order to heal, making them the ultimate PvP healer. If you like healing, but sometimes just want to take matters into your own hands, then look no further. Discs convert a portion of their damage done into healing via Atonement, a buff that you apply to your teammates. With the ability to smite, mind blast, penance, schism, and solace your enemies, plus consistent damage and healing coming out from your damage over time effect, purge the wicked. What makes this so strong is that Disc Priest, while having the ability to heal with their damage, can also do ridiculously strong healing just with standard healing spells. Shadow Mend, Penance, and Radiance are all incredibly potent heals when used on allies. Again, similar to Druid, Disc Priest has a lot of defensive CDs to rotate through. You've got Pain Suppression and Power Word Barrier for damage reductions, and Rapture for some increased shielding. On top of some great tools like Thought Steel for some added CC, Power Infusion to increase your own or your teammates' haste, and best of all, Dark Archangel, which increases not only your own damage, but the damage of your team by 15%, which alongside a Disc Priest's already high damage, makes them great for any setup composition. Not to mention the strongest addition, which is the Venthyr Covenant ability Mind Games. This incredibly strong ability does some absurd initial damage before then turning your targets damage to healing and healing to damage. Now, it's going to be your job as a Discipline Priest to keep your team alive, obviously, but also assist with damage or increase the damage of your team during burst setups, while looking for opportunities to utilize Psychic Scream or Mind Control for some added CC. All of this while also making use of your offensive and defensive dispel abilities in Purify and Dispel Magic. Having an extra layer of skill involved with avoiding CC thanks to the ability Shadow Word Death, which allows you to break CC like Polymorph, Freezing Trap, Fear, or Blind if used at the correct times. The biggest weakness of Disc Priest is Melee Cleaves. The pure consistent damage output of most melee classes makes you unable to fully utilize your atonement healing, forcing you to have to spend most of your time using primarily healing abilities, hindering your damage output. This is why you're best paired up with classes that offer a lot of peels, control, or off healing to help you survive and fully maximize your atonement healing. But overall, the added damage, strong healing, decent CC, and all the extra utility from spells like Dark Archangel and Power Infusion go on to keep this healer as one of the best healers to main once again in Shadow lens patch 9.0. Our third and final addition to our healers and this list as a whole is going to be Restoration Shaman. There was a lot of speculation about Restoration Shamans really struggling once Shadowlands hit with the loss of the Azerite trait pack spirit. Well, don't worry, Shamans are set to be one of the strongest healers in the expansion. Thanks to numerous buffs to both Riptide and Earthshield, Shaman's once biggest weakness of having to hard cast weak heals is now non-existent. If you like being disruptive, having good mobility, and spamming instant heals, then Shaman is going to be a great pick. In Arena as a Shaman, you're kitted especially well at dealing with casters, having tools like Wind Shear and Grounding Totem to either negate or interrupt casts. Combined with the use of Line of Sight, you can be a caster's nightmare. Although lacking any real CC other than Hex, which is dispellable by most compositions, a lot of your offense comes with the ability to purge, removing important buffs from your opponent. Restoration Shamans have never really been recognized for their damage. Well, this is about to change in Shadowlands. Both Lava Burst and Flame Shock now pack a real punch, but their main strengths right now come with their instant healing. Between Riptide, Healing Stream, and Earth Shield, paired up with the new Earthen Harmony, Legendary, and Necrolore Covenant ability Primordial Wave, you can often heal most damage without even casting. And if the pressure does become too much, you've got an abundance of strong defensive cooldowns to rotate through such as Earthen Wall Totem for damage reduction, Ascendance for added instant healing, and Spirit Link to recover in those tricky situations. 
What's gone on to further bolster Restoration Shaman strengths is just how mana efficient they are. Thanks to new additions like Water Shield and Mana Tide Totem, paired up with your Resurgence passive, it becomes almost impossible to run out of mana. The only real weaknesses right now for Restoration Shamans are melee cleaves. If a team is able to pressure you hard enough to where your instant healing isn't enough to keep you alive, dealing with the interrupts of multiple melee can often be a struggle. But even then, with good kiting in Ghost Wolf, it's still something you have the tools to manage. All right, everyone, with the healers covered, that's going to be it for our best specs to main for PvP going into Shadowlands patch 9.0. On screen now, we'll have a quick recap of all the recommended specs for each role. And just as a reminder, we here at Skillcapped put a ton of work into guides just like this one to make sure that we provide you with the most up-to-date and accurate information that you can find anywhere leading up to and after the Shadowlands release. So if you'd like to support the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified the moment we release more premium guides just like this one. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.